Good morning, everybody. Another round of coffee and questions. Again, grab your coffee. Here we go with the questions. So, hey, I'm bending metal in my garage and I don't have all this fancy equipment. Yeah, I understand. Okay, but there's another way that you can uh, accomplish some of this. You can grab some scrap steel. And let me show you one variation. This is just your quick tip of the day. Hold on just a sec, I'll throw up a picture. Let's get right after it. No long intros, like I always say. And let's discuss it. Okay, one sec. Okay, I threw up a couple of pictures here. This is very simple to make. Let's take a look at this. He used a piece of angle iron or some kind of angle steel. Now, if you don't have that and you want to weld two plates together to make this L, for the base you can. It's not hard to do. But in this case, that's what he used, a piece of like angle steel he had laying around. Or, like I said, weld your own. Weld, weld that bracket in an L. You can grind them down. Nothing fancy, okay, but you don't need it to be. Then he used a piece of angle iron on top. You can see the picture on the right. It's a little bit better picture. And he welded it all the way around. Not on the inside, just on the outside. Made it plenty secure enough, plenty strong. Then he took a piece of round pipe and he welded it. Or he, you know, he tack welded it all the way around, really. He didn't, you know, do a complete weld. That's not a big deal. It's more than secure. Now, this is what I would caution you on. I have one caution here because I've made these and I've also thrown a couple in the scrap pile. That distance between the round pipe and that angle iron going up, I keep mine fairly tight. So let's say that I have a piece of quarter inch cold rolled steel and I want to bend it. And I set it in there with this big, large gap you're not really going to get the bend you want. Or maybe you do. Maybe you don't want to make tight bends. You have to play around with this. So what I would encourage you to do at first is spot weld that round piece of steel. Pick your piece of steel in there. If it's cold rolled, that's what I use because I can bend. Well, I have to bend everything by hand. I don't have a forge and all that stuff. So set it in there and start to bend it. And you'll see what I mean. Now, if you don't like it, you can use that angle grinder and a cutoff wheel and just tap those tack welds and pull that off of there. Put it in closer. And you can play around with this until you get the bend that you want going. Now, you can change diameter here of this pipe. So you can make yourself several of these. That's an, it's an easy, quick, fun project to do for your garage. You can change that diameter piping. And you'll create different ways to bend different like loops or arcs. Depends on what you're trying to do here. But this is a quick, easy project. Let me throw you up an example of something and tear down one of these. And we'll do right to the questions and answers. Okay, so let's take a look up over here on the left. This is just a piece of rebar. You can buy it at any Home Depot, Lowe's, whatever. Okay, and what he did, you can heat it up if you want to. It's going to create that bend much easier because now it'll be soft from the heat. Let's say you didn't have the heat. You can use like a, pi a piece of pipe on the end of the rebar. You slide it over. It gives you like a better lever and you can bend this real easy. So either way, the, anyway, the point is this is the kind of bend you can put in it. Now, by changing the diameter of that round piece of steel, you can change the diameter of the inside of that hook over here on the left. It all depends on what you're wanting to do. Now, I have a series of these made up. Some have got three different pipes positioned differently. Some have got two, some have got one. They're for different things. I experimented around when I was playing around with scrap steel. I'm gonna throw it out anyway. It gives you a chance to practice your welds. It gives you a chance to put some thought into something. These can be very, very handy if you're trying to shape and bend steel. So, all right, questions and answers, here we go. Is it only for rebar? No, no, you can use it for all different kinds of metal. Just keep in mind that spacing between that round diameter, uh, the picture over here on the left, just keep an eye on that spacing between the round diameter and that piece of angle iron because you want whatever steel you're gonna bend to fit into that area so that you can create the bend. You don't want too much slop, but if you are too close, you're never gonna be able to put the piece of steel in there. I use a lot of cold rolled steel. It's about one eighth inch uh, you know, in thickness. And I use a lot of quarter inch, sometimes half inch rod, you know, stuff like that. And so I create the gap enough to where it can accommodate both of those. Now the quarter inch, I have another one where I've got it fairly tight. So you have to play around and figure out for yourself, I mean, how you want to tweak these, I guess is what I'm saying. Make them to your own design. Yeah, you can make them bigger if you want to. Um, I haven't done that. I mean, I haven't had a need. I make them about the size that you see because I like to set them right into my vise, like the picture up here on the right. I tighten it down real good and I'm ready to go. I bend my metal. 
I, when I'm done, I just loosen the vise up and I just take the little jig back out and I put it back on the welding cart. And you can use vice grips. You can use all different kinds of things. I mean, you can create these your own way. These are very simple pictures of very simple tools that you can use to bend steel. Like I said, use a piece of pipe. You can go right over the end of this rebar or, you know, the flat, cold rolled round steel and you can bend these. Now, of course, the bigger you start getting in diameter and wanting to bend, you're going to have to have a way to heat it up. Oxyacetylene is, in my opinion, the best way to go. I have never tried it with map gas or anything, so I can't really speak to that. Oxyacetylene, that's what I would use to answer your question. Well, I didn't, okay, yeah, if you go out and buy a brand new set of oxyacetylene torches and tanks, hoses and tips and all that, you're going to run into a costly thing, I understand, but it's a tool that's a value. You'll use it for the rest of your life. It's nice to have around the garage. You're not going to go through, unless you're doing a lot of welding, you're not going to go through those big cylinders that quick. Um, okay, I would tell you go to Craigslist, put it on your, uh, your hunt list and keep after it. I mean, you'll eventually find somebody that is getting rid of the tanks, the cart, the hoses, the tips, all that. And uh, I've done it more than once. I gave one set I bought. I cleaned it all up. Uh, I found it. I got it for almost next to nothing. Cleaned it up and I gave it to my son that lives, uh, you know, up the hill. And he he now has a nice oxyacetylene set up for himself. I mean, if he needs to heat, bend, or do anything like that. Oxyacetylene is like, you know, the older ways to weld. I'm not saying that, but it's one of the older ways. I mean, I'm a fan of MIG welding. It works for everything that uh, I want it to do. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm rattling. This is the Home Handyman. It was meant to be your quick tip of the day. Please click subscribe. I'll see you on the next video. You folks have a good day.